here's a good one for you I've got a um, battery drain problem on Kawasaki R5 oh. get the seat out of the way just a 12 volt 12 battery um, started off a couple of months ago um, it's draining about 100 milliamps um, something like that so the battery was dead after about a couple of weeks standing I've come to try it now and it's drawing a fair bit more I've just got that uh, insulated just bear with me a sec I'll have to go in my jumper wire from over there Hold on. okay I've got my clamp meter hooked up onto that I should point to the zero of that okay so I've got this jumper wire going from the black on the terminal of the battery that's the, um, the negative lead that, that's showing 19 18 amps now that's got to be a record for parasitic drain I'll show that again maybe you can see the sparking against the terminal huh? 18 amps parasitic draw I said, wow, what can cause that much? So I'd look at the, the fuse box there, those are 10 amp, you know, ignition, horn, tail light, headlights, turn lights, etc. So I know it can't be any of those. Uh, can I open that? I can. I can see that there's a spare 30 amp fuse in there. Well, where does that go? It doesn't go into this box, it's just a spare fuse. So what could take? 17 amps with that blown fuse so I was thinking well the main heavy load on this would be the starter motor so, and so investigations this is the starter motor relay I'm going to turn that off I'm going to go the other side and I'll take it off and see if the drain disappears okay so it's exactly the same setup now I've disconnected this connector going to solenoid the starter relay Let's try this again, do exactly the same thing again. Just touch that onto the wire and shouldn't be. There we go. No draw. So it looks like we found a problem. A 17 amp parasitic draw from relay. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna I'm gonna plug that back in. I can't get both in shot, so you can see that I'm getting plugged in, just push it in and see. There you go. 19 amps, take it out, no amps, 18 amp, 18 amp parasitic draw, so it looks like I'm looking for a new relay, you wouldn't have thought the relay would take that much, but it's got 30 amp fuse on it, so take it off, there you go, draw gone, let's have a look around this side shall we? Uh, this is what it looks like. So it looks like I'm going to need a new one of those. Okay, hold the phone and hold the mouse. Don't order anything yet. It's not the starter relay that's faulty. This being the starter relay, I've connected that back up. The fault goes through that, but it's not that. It's just the positive going from there, white wire, through this, through a fuse, and into the ignition and it also kindly goes into the rectifier which is going to be my next problem so jumper cables clamp meter same same thing again no draw let's go around this side i probably can't do this with one hand put that back together i'll pause it for a second and i'll show you the meter when this is reconnected and there's a challenge for you, I'm trying to do this on one knee with the phone stuck on a selfie stick and the meter here oops, I've got it off okay, it's holding the meter, I've got it on diode mode that's a little arrow, it's about my thumb there not on resistance mode, this isn't on diode mode so it's open at the moment I'm going to balance that on the what's that, back brake can you see that? Okay. What's going to happen in diode mode is just put these two together. Can we see that? Yeah, 
Watch that. And it beeps when there's a short. Okay. So I'm going to be testing. Can you see that? Right. It's that. I'm going to be testing. This is the white. And just about see it on top of the frame. I'm trying to keep the display in there as well. Perched on, on me. There you go. That's a white positive from two from the battery yellow one two and three uh, going to the rectifier three phases through some diodes now i'm just looking for a fault now it doesn't matter which way around i'm going to put these probes all i'm looking for is a fault stroke short so i'll just one probe there to white one probe to the uh, let's show you me a reading or something it's probably a reverse diode okay it's not a short it's the main thing uh, you, you, the middle one yellow two ah dead short let's do the other one as well so that's giving me the same readings as that one and that one the same it's probably a reverse bias diode but that is where my problem is ladies and gentlemen a dead short between positive through um faulty diode probably and straight to ground get this one with these probes around for a laugh so i probably know what i'm going to get here should give something like half a volt Three, three, so that's a forward bias diode. I'm going to get the shot here, aren't I? There you go, same short. And I should get diode reading on there as well. Contact's a bit corroded, but there you go. So that's where my problem is. So the positive straight through from there to there, and it's probably going through the stator windings to ground all 17 amps of it so what I'm going to need is a new rectifier I've already done this I've already deordered it so I know what the problem is uh, 40 pound from Germany so I have to wait a couple of weeks so if that was helpful at all maybe <laughs> just a little addendum on this uh, for those like pictures I like pictures um, this is what I think is happening. So I've drawn this uh, little schematic. Uh, this star shape bit here, uh, being the stator, stator, alternator, whatever. Uh, three yellow wires coming out of it, giving you AC about 60 volts. Going into starting here, and going over to here. That's the rectifier made up of six diodes. This blue bit here is the voltage regulator. I've drawn in the main fuse as well, and a battery. Okay, so in operation, this is how it's supposed to work. Um, each of these yellow wires goes to a pair of diodes. Uh, that rectifies AC to DC, passes AC positive only that way, and you get your ground that way, negative. Y2 does the same and Y3 does the same. So it's going to rectify that to 60, maybe even more volts. Obviously you can't put 60 volts straight into the battery. So that's the voltage regulator job here. It chops it down to 14 and a half volts. So you can uh, back charge, uh, charge into the battery. But in my case, what I think is happening, I don't know if I'm right. Uh, positive comes from the battery through the fuse doesn't go in there this diode seems to be fine it's dioding but it goes from there it goes through this one that, that diode's turned into a conductor down this yellow wire and back to y2 this is the center one which i showed you on the bike so really that's got to go somewhere so i'm assuming this is an assumption that center bit there is grounded 
so it's taking my 17 amps from there straight through there through this diode back down there through this little through the winding the stutters and to ground that's what i think is happening uh, let's think about the because uh, it's taking about 17 amps so let's assume that the battery gives off 12 volts uh, 12 volts and 17 amps so it's got to be a fairly r low resistance coming from the battery going into there let's have a look at resistance shall we just a bit of maths maths with an s on the end voltage 12 current let's call it 17 times resistance can we see that let's hope so so resistance is 12 over 17 equals R so in modern money R is 0 0.7 ohms which just happens nicely to correspond with the resistance of the stator coil so that's where it's going it's a wonder that hasn't burned up the coil I have checked these there's about one ohm between phases there so nothing open how I don't know but uh, hopefully we get the new regulator rectifier that short should go if that's been of any help to somebody good I've never seen anything like this on YouTube not even for cars so I've learnt a lot from YouTube so give something back